It's time for our community spotlight. And today with me is Stacey Sheeman from the United Way of Ashland County. Hello. Hello. We're it's our monthly update. Again. And I, I love getting information about what's going on in and around our listening area. And so tell me what's new in your world. Well, today we launched our annual campaign at bright and early at 745 this morning. So we were able to tell the community what our goal is and then also honor our pay setters who have started the campaign a little bit early on the quiet side and unveil their results. And then also highlight our partner agencies and the programs that we'll be funding in 2022. So it was a good morning, a fun morning. We were also able to kind of honor past campaigns because of the pandemic and give them a shout out because they've done such a great job. So it was it was kind of a mixed morning of things that we were doing, but it was exciting to get to see people in person and to get the campaign launched with some excitement. So let people know in case they've never been associated with United Way Giving, how does it work and how long does it go for and what does it go for? So the campaign launches quietly in August with our pace setters, and those are businesses who have committed to starting their campaigns early and work with their employees to raise a certain number of dollars within their own organizations. They set their own goals. And they usually, the pay setters usually raise about 30% of the overall goal. And then we then tell the community publicly at our kickoff in September, which is really when the campaign launches in September, what the remainder is that we're hoping that they're able to pledge to the campaign. So today we were able to unveil um, that the uh, pay setters have raised about $319,000, which is very exciting for us on a $850,000 goal. And then the remaining businesses were able to pick up their employee packets today because they ask their employees to pledge a certain amount to the campaign. And then those dollars can be well withheld through their um, paycheck if they want. They can do a one-time gift. Um, however, it works for them and their families. So we do it in a variety of different ways. And then the campaign we're hoping is going to be done about December 15th. We do have a challenge out to the community. We have a very philanthropic donor who has challenged us to have the campaign as close to finish by December 15th as possible. And if we can get pledges of $750,000, then he will put in the last hundred thousand dollars, which is amazing. Um, So we're really hoping that we'll be complete by mid-December. And then those dollars that have been pledged then are allocated out to the partner agencies beginning in 2022. So we have um, 15 different partner agencies with 26 different programs, and those funds then are used to help those programs solve issues within our community. And if somebody doesn't have a workplace campaign, do you have giving on your website as well? On our website, um, for sure. And also um, we ask businesses if they just want to do a corporate gift, that is fine as well. But yes, they can go right to the website Um, If they just Google United Way of Ashland County, it'll pop right up and there's a spot for them to give us a gift and I, and they can allocate it to whatever mission fits their heart. So that works out well too. So they can direct where their gift goes. Yeah. And I think it's really important that we all do our part to kind of give to, to the fund and it helps so many places. And so speaking of partner agencies, these are the people that you support. Would you introduce Becky to us? Yes. So I asked Becky Gentis to be on this with us today. Um, She's the director of Safe Haven, which is a program of Appleseed Community Mental Health, um, which is a partner agency of ours. They do a lot of important work. They're one of our largest agencies. And so they have many different programs within Ashland County, just trying to make sure that people are safe and thriving and are getting all of the mental health services that they could use. And there's a variety of ways in which that happens, but October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And so I asked Becky if she could come here so she can speak to their mission, what they do and how they're helping people in Ashland County. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, Yeah, so October is a huge month for us because we are um, a domestic violence shelter, but we also do a lot of outreach services. And in October, we highlight um, domestic violence prevention work. We, pre- we also highlight 
any victims that have lost their lives to domestic violence in Ashland County. And we do a candlelight vigil honoring them and invite the family and the community to remember them and to hear their stories. It's a very impactful moment. It's called the Candlelight Vigil, and that'll be on October 5th at 6.30 p.m. at the Corner Park, and all are welcome to come and, and join us in remembering the victims. We also do something that's called the um, Silent Witness Project, where we have 10 silhouettes honoring the 10 victims of domestic violence in Ashland County, and then we put that their stories on the silhouette, and they will be located in different places throughout the month. Um, week one will be at the Corner Park in Ashland, week two will be at the Lambville Central Park, Week three will be at the Bicentennial Park and week four will be at Ashland University. We're doing a new event this year. We're very excited about that. It's called the Empty Chair Project. And the Empty Chair represents obviously the family member that is no longer able to be at the table as we approach the holidays. And this, these chairs will be 10 chairs and they will be at Freerfield this year. Often the Silent Witness Project is kind of something that you see from a distance. You don't often get a chance to read the stories that are on the silhouettes. And it's really impactful when you hear their stories and we honor them in a very significant way. So their stories will be at the fur field as people could just walk around and they will be located there for them to view. And then one of our most successful and impactful events has been the Speak Out and that's October 25th at 6 p.m. at the Professional Building. Something I've learned sitting in the seat as a director is how impactful it is and empowering it is for victims to take their story back and to tell their story. And it's no longer the perpetrator that gets the acknowledgement about what happened to them, but they get to say it. And so this is an opportunity that we give a voice for the victims to say, this is what happened to me. And I want to speak out about it and speak out against the violence. So these are some of the things that we have going on in Safe Haven. We're also doing a a social media campaign that's called 31 Ways in 31 Days. And we're just taking pictures of community folks and um, they're holding up a statement saying that they support survivors or they stand against domestic violence. And then we're doing also facts according to that. So if you look at our um, Facebook page at Safe Haven of Ashland and then on our website as well, all of this will be available for the community to see and take part in. So a quick question. You know, we talk a lot about domestic violence and mm -hmm. and I have a story as well. And it was always, am I really in a bad situation? And mm -hmm. how can we find out if a friend or even ourselves are in a bad situation? What do we do? Well, one of the things um, is that you could look at just information about signs and red flags of dating violence. Um, stalking. There's a lot of red flags and we have those on our website. You can look those up as well or you can call Safe Haven because what we also do, we're not just a shelter where we house folks. We do a lot of outreach in the community. We have folks that are just designated for court proceedings. Um, we have a campus advocate at Ashland University. We have a campus or we have an advocate that goes into the schools to talk about healthy dating relationships and being a bystander and being an ally in the process and helping. So call us at Safe Haven. We do have a crisis hotline um, that they could call at any time and it's 24 seven. It's 419-289-8085. There's always an advocate, a trained advocate on the other end of the phone to answer any questions. But I would tell most people to trust your instincts. If you have a question or there's a red flag in your mind, there's a reason why it's there and to trust that and know that somebody's here to support you and will walk through this journey with you as you stumble through. Is this, like you had mentioned, is this really a dangerous thing? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're not sure, but it, that's why we're here. We're going to help you walk through that and determine whether or not you need any further assistance. And um, again, what we want to make sure is that people know that they're not alone and they never have to go this journey by themselves. We have support groups. We do, like I said, a lot of outreach in the community, supportive services, and then we're also a shelter so that people know if I am fearful, I have a place that I can go in Ashland County to stay to make sure that I'm safe. Yeah. And, and Stacy, you have that phone number, the crisis number on your website as well, yes, I'm assuming. We yeah, that's really important. I know that uh, that was the step that I took was finally reaching out to somebody and saying, Kate, I don't know, but let me, let me ask you a few questions about what is kind of yeah. feeling wrong. And I remember the lady going, oh, honey, 
you're in mm-hmm. a bad situation. <laughs> There's also lethality assessments that we can take. We also have um, safety assessments, security assessments to let somebody know, like you need to see the, the more you hit these check boxes, the more dangerous your circumstances are. Yeah. And typically perpetrators are only going to escalate. They don't usually de-escalate. So it's really important that they start to identify the risk factors and to make sure that they're doing a safety plan to know how to handle what happens next and to make sure that they're safe. Um, and that's what we do. We wanna make sure that everybody feels like they know and that they have a support person walking through this journey with them. Yeah. And that's what I was gonna say, Becky, because I think that a lot of people just think, well, just leave. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. not that easy no. and it's not that safe. I mean, leaving can be very, very dangerous if it it's is the not most done da- planfully. It is the most dangerous time for um, a victim of domestic violence um, is the leaving. And um, that's why it takes so much to leave. Um, a lot of people say that just leave, like you had mentioned. And um, abusers are really good at manipulating and letting them think that there is nobody out there that will help them, that they'll take away their children, that they'll make sure that they don't have any financial support. And it is so, so scary, let alone the lethality that might potentially um, be involved in this. We've seen a lot because of the pandemic that the lethality assessments have increased greatly, the severity, uh, the strangulations are increased dramatically. The lethality that they thought of just in the quarter with the um, COVID went up 36% for domestic violence victims. And if you get on your um, news break at all, there's constantly a woman has died, men have died because of their partner's um, abuse. COVID has not helped everybody safe at home is not safe for everyone. Mm. And it exacerbates any kind of um, violence that was already there to be stuck inside um, and not being able to have eyes on somebody to make sure that they're safe. So please be a good um, bystander, check on your friends if you know that they're having any issues and please call us. We would join you in making sure that your loved one is safe and we will provide supportive services to family members as well. Anybody could call us at any point in time, ask questions, get statistics, get resources, whatever you need. We want to make sure that we're providing that for you. Yeah, definitely. That's a very good information. And I hope somebody is actually getting the courage up to maybe make that phone call and don't try to do it yourself <laughs> for sure. And absolutely. And, and really, and truly we, anytime day or night, sometimes the safest time is in the middle of the night when your abuser might be sleeping. There's always somebody that will answer that phone call to make sure that we're helping you walk through that safety plan so that you do not end up as the 11th victim in Ashland County. Yeah. And I can say from personal experience, just making the phone call gave Uh me more courage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so just having someone on the other end saying, okay, let's do this and and helping. And that was, that was a big deal. So I really appreciate all that you do. Yeah. And it's just, it's just so helpful to have somebody say, I get it. Like I understand Mm -hmm. why you're afraid. And we've had most of the people that end up in shelter called us several months before they were able to bring up the courage to actually come in and get safe. Mm -hmm. And I think Angie, thank you for sharing because you didn't know that I was even bringing Becky on today. I mean, you knew I was bringing Becky, but maybe not what she was doing. And I think to share your story, like you just have helps others to not feel shame in, and reach out and ask for that helping hand. Because I think as women, we really try to handle things on our own and we don't want to share some of these things that feel embarrassing to us and they shouldn't be embarrassing. Oh, so I was going to kind of go on what you were saying a minute ago. Um, I think it's important. Okay. So I went a lot of years without telling my story until a couple of years ago when I was asked to speak at a domestic violence luncheon. And my whole thing was, um, I had very dear friends who were like, if you're going to speak at this thing, remind them to watch. You got to remind them to watch for the red flags because you would never pay attention to the red flags. And it bugged me so badly that they kept saying that to me. And I had to think about it and I had to speak to the director, kind of the person in your position. And, um, I had to finally say there were no red flags. Everything was very gray. Nothing made sense to me. I couldn't see what was right in front of me because I was snowballed so badly by the abuser. And so um, my whole topic was when you have a friend who's in that situation, just keep digging in, just keep getting close. Don't, 
you know, cause my friends all were like, okay, well, we're going to leave you to your stuff. And that didn't help, <laughs> you know? No, because you do, you don't, they're so good at making it seem like you're the one who's too, um, too sensitive or you're the one who's crazy. You're thinking these thoughts, where are you getting this? And they just make it sound so truthful. Um, I don't know if you've heard the saying that, you know, Satan's the author of 99% truth, 1% lie, and that 1% dilutes everything. And I think that's what abusers do. So many things are true, but then they'll put that lie in there and it's like, oh, that's right. It is my fault. I shouldn't have done this. And they really blame themselves. They do a lot of self-blaming. And like Stacy mentioned, a lot of women who are very intelligent think I couldn't be, I can't be, I'm too smart for this. I would have figured this out. And, mm, nope. <laughs> and, and, and you don't realize how smooth and how gradual that it happens. People wouldn't end up in abusive situations if they were abusive immediately. It happens. Like you said, it's gray. It's this long, really perpetual time frame of seducting your mind yeah. and making you think it's you. And it's a, it's a, it's power and control. It's what you said. It's about power and control. And that happens over your mind first, isolate you away from people, really get you alone and making you think that there's nobody out there. And like you said, it's so important to have friends to say, uh, uh-uh. uh, do you hear what you're saying? Do you hear what you're saying? You would never let anybody else accept that in their world. Why would you accept it in yours? And you do have to have friends that say, honey, no, I'm here. And we're not going to, we're not going to let you go through this alone. So thank you for saying that. Thank you for opening up because it does have to be normalized for people to say, I need to seek help. Um, I, I, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Very good. Well, I, I hope that those uh, folks that are interested in getting more information or even asking questions very anonymously can, can get up the courage to do that today. And, um, all the information, can you give those your website or your Facebook page and the number again, just in case somebody wants to write it down? Absolutely. So our hotline number at safe Haven is 419-289-8085. And our, um, website is www.safe Haven of Ashland.org. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, same thing, Safe Haven of Ashland. So you'll reach us in any one of those ways. And please call because we would love to be able to just talk to you. And if that's all we do, that's fine. You know how to get a hold of us. That would make our hearts happy. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that there's probably family members who are taking that down as well. Very good. Thank you so much, Becky, for the information and for being available. (laughs) People like you you that save people like me. (laughs) Thank you so much. And we appreciate the support that you're giving us today and United Way dollars. They're, they're here to help promote our program and other programs around the County so we can serve folks in need. And we, we won't be able to do that without the supportive community. So thank you, Ashlyn. Yeah, Stacy. So that's the whole reason why we have guests on this program. That's the whole reason why we, you guys do the campaign is to help organizations like this to do what they're doing. And so um, the money you raise stays in Ashland County unless it's designated, correct? This is why, you know, we value our program partners so very much because we get the easy job of raising the money and they have the very difficult day in, day out of making things be better in Ashland County and really working to help people find a place where they can thrive again. And so I, I said that this morning, like, I just am so thankful the program partners that we have and you know, they work very, very hard and they have to do it every day. And there's a lot of really difficult stories out there and, and they're, there doing the hard work. So I really value our program partners and the work that they do in the community. All right. Give your website one more time so somebody can get out there and donate to the United Way campaign. It is U-W-A-S-H-L-A-N-D-O-H dot O-R-G. Surprised somebody didn't yell I-O at the end of that thing. (laughs) There is no (laughs) I-O. All right, ladies, thank you so much for coming on the community spotlight today. And thanks for having us. We'll catch up, Stacey, next month. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.